Okay, we're out on the ice for another weekend. This is uh, family fishing weekend. And guess what happened? John caught a fish. <laughs> caught a nice whitey. And uh, it's really fat. It's a stalker. And uh, it's really, really fat. He's a stalker? Yeah, he's a stalker. See this little lack of a fin? That's where they've clipped them. What are you using, John? A bad boy. Yeah? Thanks, Lou. Yeah. <laughs> he loves saying that, eh? I've got this rack. And uh, it seems to be pretty good for for the auger. That's pretty cool. It's a little wimpy. It's a little wimpy? Oh. Well, anyway. That's pretty cool. You put on some extra little U-bolts on there, or... Pretty cool. How it's, it's mounted is with a U-bolt. U-bolts or u bolt Yeah. Show us your technique. Can't. <laughs> you can't. Don't give it up. Yeah. Just like that. Du, 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 du. And oh. then a little lift every once in a while. Yeah. And the Williams uh, brought them in. Yeah, because I... Called them in. I'm using the Williams, you know. It's like a lighthouse. They see it, eh? They go, what's that flashing thing over there? I better go check that out. Next thing you know. Oh, that's a cute little minnow feeding on the bottom. Kabam. Today I'm using the bad boy Gobi Glow. And you have to keep putting your knot to the back. Okay? So that it looks like it's feeding on the bottom. And then you just lift it once in a while. Pretty hard to beat a, a Rapala, Rapala, I guess, um, fillet knife. This is my second one that I've ever owned. And the last one I wore out. Yeah. So, that says something. I caught a lot of fish and cleaned a lot. This, this is, is done Johnny's this, way. This is how I do it. All right. Going along the backbone. Just cutting along the uh, top and carrying through to the tail. All right. Right on. And then you're just nicely, this is like filleting, I guess, eh? I'm just going along the backbone. Around the rib cage, through the Y bones, around the rib cage. We'll take the Y bones out later in the process. Alright, you make it look easy. I can't do it though. I know I catch fish, but I can't clean them. I'm too squeamish. Okay. And you just kind of like uh, go along there. He's trying to do it quickly for the video. No, you don't keep the you don't keep the belly meat. That's where all the the crap is. There, there's a nice fillet. I take the Y bones out. Okay, so you're gonna repeat uh, the pro. Oh, I know this guy's a pig, eh? He's full of stuff. He's got full. No, oh, he's full of spawn. Oh wow, that's weird. Okay, so you're getting a little bit of meat for the cat. There it is. That's cool. She's going to like that. Look at her patiently waiting. <laughs> you know, don't you, Oreo? Right? Yeah, you know there's fish coming. From Daddy. Daddy caught you a fish. you got to wait. Already purring. Already purring. Yeah. Okay, so he's flipped the fish over. Now he's repeating the process on the other side against the backbone. So you go right to about the bum hole. <laughs> and then that's where the rib cage drops down. And you just slice right through with your knife. And you go right down to the backbone. And you go 
cut right off. Okay, and just cut the top part of it and just, wow. Oops. It's um, kind of hard to get in there. We haven't got a lot of light in this kitchen, unfortunately. But it's turning up okay on the video, I think. It'll be alright. Excellent. taste good. It will taste good. Mm -hmm. It'll be really good. And of course, you know, when you got the camera on you and you're trying to do I stuff. I can't see, I can't even see what I'm doing. I'm just doing it by feel. Yeah. Well, you're doing pretty good. A lot better than what I could do, for sure. And there's, um, different methods of cleaning whitefish. When I was a kid, my dad and probably many other people's dads, probably your dad too, Johnny, yeah. used to scale the fish. And uh, while he's getting straightened down here, I'll, I'll be right back. I'm going to go get a scaler and show you what that looks like. This is a really old scaler. Emsdale, Ontario, I think it says. Oh, no. There look at he that. is. And there he is. Want to see what he's eating? Yeah, I want to see what he's eating. So while you're doing that, he's full. Ugh. This is the other side of the Look scaler. It. He is full. What's he got in his stomach? I don't know. It wasn't spawned after all, eh? Oh, he's got. Oh, he's loaded with minnows, goby, and gobies. Goby. Goby. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Goby. Lots of gobies. Goby. Wow. Goby. Well, that's, okay, so there's probably like a dozen, maybe. I don't know. And what, what's Two, going on three, with this? Four, maybe, maybe a half dozen gobies. Yeah. yeah. And plus, he's probably been sucking up zebra mussels. It's amazing. So why is his bladder so big? Uh... Maybe I brought him up too fast or something. I don't know. Maybe that... he's only in. So that's what the whole deal was. Yeah. He was just puffed up. He's just puffed up, but I, I caught him in um, 35 feet of water. This is an old scaler. Is that a pizza docker? No. <laughs> it's a it's a an old scaler, and they used to like go along this way and scale the I fish. I just use one of these to scale them, so I don't know. You know, anyway, that's a real oldie. I mean, that's been around since I was a kid, for sure. God knows how old it is, though. However, pretty cool. And I've seen it worked a lot. You're being so kind to the kitty. You're just cutting up little pieces, little chunks for the cat. She loves it. She's, look it, look it, look it. Just, just waiting patiently, aren't you? Yes, you are. Yeah. Look at that. Now oh, she's just going to wolf right into that. Oh, I couldn't take a piece away. <laughs> what are you doing with that? <laughs> Every time you hack through bones, yeah. you just give your knife a little dress. I use a little diamond sharpener. Ten bucks. Pretty hard to beat. Yeah. Excellent. So you go like that. Just makes life a little easier. Okay. And then you know, rinse it off. Get all the filing. You don't want too many filings in your fillets. And I just taking the Y bones out. You can feel them. You go along with your thumb or finger. Yeah. And you feel where they are. Yeah. And then you just go on the back side of them. Hold on. These ones are a little tricky at the first. And you you cut towards them so you hit the bones and then you go along the bone right down to the skin all right I guess you could probably do this with most fish anyways right yeah 
Same principle even um, for pike? Pike are a little different. Their, their Y bones, uh, they Y out really wide. Yeah. And so you pretty near got to cut the fillet into three pieces to get the Y bone out. Uh, but a pike's pretty big, so you get a lot of meat anyway. So, um, The best are probably bass or walleye. Pickerel. Yeah, we say pickerel. <laughs> we grew so, up with pickerel. And if yeah. you go into a fish store, yeah, very often... Uh, you, you don't buy walleye fillets, you buy pickerel fillets if you go into a store. So, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really so matter about the scientific name to us. We grew up with pickerel. Yeah. We grew up with ruffed. We didn't grow up. Oh, I grew up we didn't grow up calling them ruffed grouse either. We call them partridge, even though it's not exactly the same. However, it is what it is, and that's what we go by. Wow, kind of transparent. You can actually see the bones, huh? Yeah, you just go like that. Sometimes you put a little bit of water on your knife too when you're doing that. Yeah. And it makes the knife slide through the meat better. Go right down to the meat. Yeah. And uh, right down to the skin, I mean. For, for skinning them, it's nice to have a wide knife. A wide knife that's really thin and a little bit flexible. And a wide knife that's straight like that, just follows along the skin nice to the skin off the filly. Watch. So you take a little tag in there so you got something to grip onto. And you go like that. And you just see? wiggle it, right? Watch, see? And see the width of the knife? Yep. That helps it lift the, the meat away from the skin. And then you just pull the skin and wiggle it as you as you wiggle the knife. And see how that works? Look at how perfect that comes off of there, eh? And that's that that's what that kind of knife does. Okay. The Y bones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're there right there. Oh yeah. So you just dress those the rest of the way out. If you went right down to the skin, you wouldn't even have to do that. But anyway, oh, there's one right there. You gotta just, you know. You gotta go by feel, kind of. Okay. I think that should be boneless. And then, so you go on the back side, see all that brown stuff? That's called mud, the mud line. Yeah, and I get it this way. You take the knife and you cut all that off. You just get up under underneath it. Because if you See? eat that, it tastes it tastes fishy. And white fish is way too good to taste fishy. Yeah. It's it's as good as hell, but when you do it properly. Yeah. You get all that all that kind of meat there that's all yeah. white, that that'll cook when it cooks it turns white and um, it's just it's, it's, it's as good as halibut if you take all that mud it take away all the fishy taste yeah. so basically that's it and you just repeat the process with the other fillet off the other side and there you go and um, yeah that's the mud mud line it's called it's so he'll just clean this up, the, um, the mud line, all that pink stuff that you see. And we'll be left with a really nice couple of fillets. See, this is, that's the real meat, and that's just the fat that's on the other side of the, underneath the skin. Yeah. That's the way John cleans a fish. So there you go, now you know. He's just going to be taking a few minutes to clean this up, and, uh, we'll be eating this for supper. Right, kitty? <laughs>